just as a, as a motorist driving around, you may have noticed that there's, there's more and more of these folks that are soliciting contributions, selling bottled water on right. major intersections all around Tampa. Do you see it getting to the point where you or the city council will be forced to act? Well, it is really a public safety issue, and I've talked extensively about this with my police chief, and she agrees that it's really gotten to be a public safety issue. If people just stayed on the medians and, and asked for help, that's one thing. But they step into traffic, and I see it all the time. You've seen it. Everyone has seen it. So then the traffic light turns green. A solicitor is standing in the road. It's only a matter of time until someone gets hit. Someone's going to get killed. I mean, I think we can all safely predict that because you can't have people standing in busy traffic um, and not eventually get hurt. So why not act now and well, ban it? Well, first of all, we have two new council members who just got sworn in. You have to give them the ben you know, a, a little bit of time to become acclimated to their new position. They're not even a week into the job. Um, we have taken a close look at what St. Petersburg has enacted and um, first there was a legal challenge and so then that legal challenge went away so now our city attorney feels confident that we could take the same approach that the city of St. Petersburg has taken and I believe that in the next several months something will be shortly first something will be workshopped in front of council just to make sure that they understand the whole issue I'll tell you what the biggest problem is with this whole issue mm -hmm. and that is the boot drive that the firefighters uh, conduct every year we are always very supportive of that boot drive that they do for MDA. Uh, and, so and the problem so is that you can't make an exception for them. If you're going to ban it, uh, constitutionally, free speech issues would, would perhaps get in the way of you allowing the firefighters to raise money for MDA and not allow... Correct. It's got to be across the board. Everyone has to be treated equally. Now, I think with the, you know, if you could just have everyone stay on the median, that would be one thing. And, and the firefighters would if you told them that that's what they have to do. But the problem is, is that everyone else is not staying on the median and they are walking in traffic and it is a public safety issue. Now, someone watching this could say, well, just put more police on it. Well, we don't have, you know, in terms of priority with our police department, you know how long it would take a police officer, he sees one person in traffic, he has to pull his car over, he has to catch the person doing it, he has to stop the person, start writing that person up. Um, you know, that is not a good use of our police resources. Why do you suppose the city council um, was met with this idea last week? I think it was Joseph Catano who right. made a motion and, and failed to get a second. So there doesn't appear to be any will on the city council at this point to impose a ban. And some have suggested that it may be because they don't want to get crosswise with the newspapers. Mm, I don't think it's right to say it in the news media, but I don't think it is the newspapers. I think it's the firefighters and the boot drive, mm -hmm. um, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I still think there are many places where newspapers can be sold. But, well, the St. Um, Times did sue St. Petersburg. They did, the but, then they, but then they uh, withdrew the issue once they looked closer at it. Mm -hmm. So there is no current lawsuit. I what think would you the, like to see happen? I mean, if you could wave a magic wand and direct the city council to do something, what would you do on this issue? I don't believe we should have people in our streets, walking in our streets along busy highways in a major city like Tampa. It is simply unsafe. It is only a matter of time before somebody gets hurt or killed. And then the issue will be, why didn't you do something about it? So it's not an issue of homelessness. It's not an issue of whether we liked seeing people on the medians or, or uh, asking for money. That's not the issue. The issue is we have very big, busy, busy streets. Del Mabry, Kennedy, West Shore, we're talking major thoroughfares. And you have people who are stepping into traffic, going up to cars. The lights change. People want to move. People are impatient drivers generally. They want to get somewhere. They want to get somewhere quick. And it's only a matter of time before somebody gets hurt. It truly is a public safety issue. I've discussed it with our police chief. We, she sees it as a major public safety issue. And she does not have the resources to go around arresting people every time she sees or a police officer sees someone stepping into traffic. I do hope that the um, city council takes this up. And I, I, I do think the biggest stumbling block is the one of the firefighters in their, in their charitable drive every year. They raise a lot of money from that drive. It's a big part of Tampa's tradition. And I do think that is probably the biggest stumbling block here. What's the way around that? 
could it be that that's just the price you pay for imposing that public safety measure? Unfortunately, it will end up being the price that you pay. The firefighters will have to look at other ways of having a boot drive that isn't, doesn't involve standing in the medians and, and perhaps waiting in traffic. They're a very resourceful group. I know they will find other ways to still get their charitable contributions. The uh, public safety issue aside for a moment, and I know homeless policy is more of a county issue than a city is. issue, I understand that. But uh, th there is an organization called Homeless Helping Homeless. It's based in Tampa. It's on Flora, Nebraska there. And they represent probably the lion's share of the people that you see out there. They've got the placards or they've got the T-shirts and so on. What's your reaction to an organization whose very business model basically is predicated on soliciting from the medians of busy intersections? They get no other funding. Well, I don't know anything about that organization. Uh, I try very hard not to be judging the people on the medians because I think you have to be pretty desperate to be standing in the middle of the hot Florida sun asking for money. And it is a very sad situation. No, and, it's true. And so, you and know, I, I look I, at that and right. I, my heart goes out to them. I right. don't like them stepping into traffic. Right. I think someone's going to get hurt. I think it impedes traffic. You wish it wasn't there. But there's a human side of this that is very tragic. And it has to do with um, a lot of issues that contribute to homelessness. If the city council doesn't take this up, what will you do? Well, I think that uh, we currently have our city attorney working with council members to draft something that can be put before them. Mm -hmm. It will likely be workshopped sometime in August, and then we'll see what comes out of that workshop. It is ultimately up to city council. It's not something that I can, right. I can ha have right. any authority right. over. Right. I can ask the police right. to step up enforcement. But that's not, I've already uh, right. yeah, traveled that care. road, and, and that's but not this, practical. I don't want to make too much of this homeless helping homeless group except the fact that it's in my neighborhood, sort of. But oh. I found it interesting that there's a whole organization. You know, it's not just individuals that are out there selling water to get by themselves. This is a, this is a homeless organization that is, that again, is funded completely by this. That they keep 40% and they bring 60% back to provide housing and other services for the homeless community at large. Um, I wasn't that aware like, of that. Does that seem like a tenable way to fund a, a social service agency? I mean, well, that's how they're doing it. You know, we do a very poor job in this country of helping the homeless. There is no place for most of them to go. You can't really say realistically, everyone go to Metropolitan Ministries or the Salvation Army tomorrow because there's not enough space for them. So we have a lot of people in this community who are living in the woods, living in their cars, living in the streets. And as a society, we don't do a very good job of dealing with this issue and figuring out solutions. We uh, tend to be does, yeah. rather judgmental about it, and, and we tend to look at a lot of the people who are homeless and saying, why are you in this situation? Well, there are a whole myriad of reasons of why they're in that situation. And I, I think we all need to be a little more compassionate about people who find themselves so desperate. Now, why is there this organization that you just mentioned? I've never heard of it, but you know why? Because we're a very resourceful country, and whenever things get bad, um, people figure out ways to handle a worsening situation. And in this case, it sounds like there's some organization that has figured out some model for helping people because there aren't the resources in our community. This is a really hard topic and, and issue that I've dealt with in my seven plus years as mayor. There is absolutely no easy solution to it. It, it needs a great deal of funding from the county level and transitional housing and a whole host of social services. But that's not happening.